Makinig, manood na sa teleradyo Makinig, manood na sa teleradyo Teleradyo, teleradyo Marcelo Sa gitna ng mapanubok na panahon Magkahatid sa kakibat ay diskusyon Sama-sama tayo Kahit magkalayo Sa programang ito Tiyak ang pagkatuto Tele- Good afternoon, Del Pilarians. Thank you for standing by. We experience a technical difficulty. You are tuning in to Teleradio Marcelo, ang telearalan ng bawat Del Pilarian. We are delighted to have you here at Teleradio Marcelo on our segment, Usapang Business. I am Mr. Billy E. Panganiban, your business partner in entrepreneurship, an applied subject under the area of ABM Math and Research Group. How's business? What are the updates on your personal schedule and transactions? I hope that we are already attuned with the new normal in education. The uncharted waters of the teaching learning process are being traveled for the past five months. As expected, there are both challenges and hopes, accelerations and lulls in our maiden voyage. As trailblazers ignited by the Filipino culture of resiliency and determination, this broadcast has been possible. Teleradio Marcelo is one of the tools of our beloved school in bridging the gap in the delivery of the most essential learning competencies. We are already wrapping up the first semester of school year 2020-2021. But in business, every moment is treated as the first, symbolizing hope and new beginning. In Filipino culture, we give a high premium to what we call buena mano. But for business to succeed and prosper, we must treat all our business transactions as important as the first one. In the pilot episode of Usapang Business last week, Mam Maria Rueda discussed the importance of having a good business record and different financial statements. In today's episode, we will tackle how to make a simplified financial statement for the fourth chapter of the business plan. Del Pilarians, are you ready to learn to prepare a simplified financial statement? Dear student, welcome to Usapang Business on Teleradio Marcelo. Let's start our review by playing the game Fact or Bluff. I will be showing to you some questions about last week's topic. I am encouraging all listeners to answer using our comment section so that I can recognize you. Let's play Fact. Or bluff. First statement. Financial statements are the means by which the information accumulated in the process by financial accounting is communicated to users on the periodic basis. Financial statements are the end product of the financial accounting process. Is it a fact or a bluff? Okay. Okay, some are answering already. Financial statements are the means by which information accumulated in the process by financial accounting is communicated to users on a periodic basis. Financial statements are the end of product of the financial accounting process. The answer is fact. The statement is indeed a fact. Okay, next statement. Owner's equity include the things or resources that the company owns that were acquired in a transaction and have a future value that can be measured. Is it a fact or a bluff? Okay. Okay, the answer is a bluff. The statement is a bluff because it's not the owner's equity, but the statement defines what assets are. 
in which it includes the things or resources that the company owns that were acquired in a transaction and have a future value that can be measured. Okay, third statement. The statement of comprehensive income is also known as the balance sheet. Is it a fact or a bluff? Okay, Shelo Loris answered bluff. Charlene Vargas answered bluff. The statement of comprehensive income is also known as the balance sheet. This statement is a bluff. Because the balance sheet is also known as the statement of financial position, not the statement of comprehensive income. Okay, fourth statement. The statement of changes in equity is considered an essential part of the monthly financial statements. Is it a fact or a bluff? John Noel de la Cruz answers bluff. Annie Grace Villaverde answers bluff. Alex Marie Fernando of 12 STEM F answer bluff. Okay, you are all correct. The answer is bluff. Because the statement of changes in equity is a reconciliation of the beginning and ending balances in a company's equity during an annual reporting because dividends and certificate of ownership is usually done annually rather than monthly. Okay, next. The statement of comprehensive income is consists of two major sections, net income and other comprehensive income. Is it a fact or a bluff? Okay, Dari de Guzman answer, fact. Eno Santos answer, bluff. Okay, some are still answering on the comment section of our Teleradio Marcelo broadcast. Okay, the answer is, it is a fact. Next question. The government and its agencies is the main user of the financial statements. Is it a fact or a bluff? Okay, Angeline Paragas Lopez, Hans Rojas, Erwin Laxa Manalad, Arian Imperial, Leandro Mauricio Chongson Gumapos is answering. John Noel de la Cruz is also answering. Okay. The answer for this statement is a bluff because we all know that the main users of the financial statements are the investors and the creditors. Last statement. Profitability refers to whether a company is able to generate profit or incur a loss during a particular accounting period, information about performance is primarily provided in Statement of Comprehensive Income. Is it a fact or a bluff? Christian Ivan Alcantara, Mayra Rivera Domingo, uh, Jones Pauline Itulid, Natasha Pauline, Jenny Adornado, Christine Fabian, is watching us. Shanley Centeno answers, it is a fact. The answer is, indeed, it is a fact. Okay. Congratulations. It seems that you have learned so much about financial statement in last week's episode, Usapang Business. Okay. Before we continue, we would have a short break. Makinig, manood na sa teleradyo Makinig, manood na sa teleradyo Teleradyo, teleradyo Marcelo Sa gitna ng mapanubok na panahon Magkahatid sa kakibat ay diskusyon Sama-sama tayo Kahit magkalayo sa programa ng ito, tiyak ang pagkatuto. Teleradio, Teleradio Marcelo, 
Telerado, Telerado Marcelo, Telerado, Telerado Marcelo. Makinig, manood na sa teleradyo Makinig, manood na sa teleradyo Teleradyo, Teleradyo Marcelo Thank you for tuning in to Teleradyo Marcelo Going back to our topic, we all know that education is everybody's business Okay, The COVID-19 pandemic shocks the entire world Entire economies were crippled by the imposition of different quarantine protocols that limits, if not entirely stopping the movement of goods and services from the point of production to the point of consumption. It results to businesses closing shops for several months that resulted to annual reports of businesses that are bleeding red. Some lucky ones are definitely thankful that they are at least at the positive side, unlike most of their counterparts. The following slide shows one of the companies that reported a profit for the year ended 2020. What can you say about the news article? What is the information stated in the first paragraph? Okay. You are all correct. That the information is about a 32% drop in the net profit of BDO and they are giving a 28.2 billion larger provision for probable loan lo losses because of the COVID pandemic because there are many businesses that cannot pay their loans to banks and other financial institutions. Okay, let's go now to our main topic. There are several income accounts that could be used in a financial statement. Service income or face income are the revenue earned by per performing services for customers, while sales are the revenues earned as a result of sale of merchandise, for example, sale of building materials by construction supply firm. Cost of sales, the cost incurred to purchase or to produce the products sold to customers during the period. For a service business, any expense which could be directly attributed to the provision of services is called cost of service. Salaries and wages expense include all the payments as a result of an employer-employee relation, relationship such as salaries and wages, 13th month pay, and other related benefits. Salaries are normally paid for workers who use analytical skills or what we call white-collar employees. On the other hand, wages are paid workers who use manual labor or what we call blue-collar employees. Utilis utilities expense. Expenses related to the use of communication facilities, the consumption of electricity, internet, and water. While rent expense are expense for leased office space, equipment, or other assets rented from others. Supplies expense is the account used for recording the usage of supplies in the normal course of business. Interest expense, an expense related to use of borrowed funds. This is also known as financing cost. Marketing expense is comprised of those costs incurred to, pre to present an organ organization's goods and services to prospective customers. Examples of costs that are classified as marketing expenses are advertising, agency fees, customer surveys, development of advertising and other promotions, gifts to customers, online advertising, printed materials and displays, social media monitoring and participation, and sponsorships. We have learned in last week's episode of Usapang Business the importance of financial statements. In business, but in real life, we cannot deny that even entrepreneurs and businessmen ask accountants to do the financial statements for their respective businesses. 
But it's, it is a requirement for any entrepreneurs to understand how to do financial statement. Today, we will learn the simplified version of the financial statements that is very beneficial to everyone. For Chapter 4 of the Business Plan, non-ABM students are required to come up with three tables for financial statement of the business plan, namely, sales budget, costing of materials, and income statement. The sales budget is simply a forecast of the budget. The table you are seeing is an example of the sales budget of Ang Guapoko Pansit area. To come up with the total sa gross sales, you simply multiply the sales forecast with the price per unit. In our illustration, the sales forecast for the week is 300 units multiplied by 80. The sales budget for week one will be, sorry, there is an error. Uh, the sales forecast is 240 and the price per unit is 100. So the total gross sales is 24,000 pesos. Okay, that's simple. How you would do your sales budget. You simply multiply the sales forecast and the price per unit for a product. What if Ang Guapo Co. Pansiteria have two products? How can we come up with a sales budget? To come up with the total gross sales, you simply multiply the sales forecast with the price per unit. We begin with product A, which we illustrate earlier, 240 pieces times 100 pesos, and then product B, 200 units multiplied by 90. The sales budget for week one would be 24,000 for product A, and for product B, it would be 18,000. We then sum up the total of the two to come up with the gross sales of the firm. So 240 times 100 would be 24,000 and 200 times 90 would be 18,000 and the sum of 24,000 and 80,000 would be 42,000 pesos. That is how you do a sales budget if the firm has two products. Okay, the next thing that you have to learn is to compute for the costing of materials. The cost of materials would be the basis of the cost of goods sold in the income statement. To illustrate the costing of materials, we will go back to our example earlier. Ang Guapo Co. Pansiteria uses soyces in its products. For product A, they use one-fourth cup of soy sauce. A regular 340 ml bottle of soy sauce of a particular brand of soy sauce costs 18 pesos per bottle. A one-fourth cup of soy sauce is about 60 ml. A 340 ml bottle divided by the total unit required for the product A, which is 60 ml, will result to 5.67. 5.67 is the number of times that particular bottle can be used to produce a single unit of product A. To compute the cost of soy sauce per unit of product A, we will simply divide the cost per bottle divided by the number of times it can be used. So that is 18 pesos divided by 5.67. The result will be 3.17 pesos per unit of product A. Okay, let's have a review. A regular 340 ml bottle of soy sauce, a particular brand of soy sauce, cost 18 pesos per bottle. Ang Guapo Co. Pansiteria needs one fourth cup to produce product A. One fourth cup is about 60 ml. 340 ml divided by 60 ml is equals to 5.67, which is the number of times you can use a bottle of soy sauce to produce product A. 18 pesos, which is the cost per bottle of soy sauce, divided by 5.67 is equals to 3.17. 3.17 is the cost of soy sauce for producing product A. What if that particular brand of soy sauce have a gallon packaging and costs only 160 pesos? 
a gallon is about 3,785 milliliters or ml. How much will be the cost of soy sauce if we will buy a gallon of it instead of the 340 milliliters bottle? To illustrate, we will divide 3,785 ml, which is the total volume of the soy sauce, by 60 ml, which is the required amount of soy sauce to be used in product A. The answer is the number of times the soy sauce in a gallon can be used to produce product A, which is about 63 times. The next step would be to divide the price of soy sauce per gallon by the number of times it could be used to determine the cost of soy sauce per piece of product. So 160 pesos divided by 63 is about 2 pesos and 54 centavos. Let's have some review. What if that particular brand of soy sauce have a gallon packaging and cost only 160 pesos? A gallon is about 3,785 ml. We buy the gallon instead of a 340 ml bottle. 3,785 divided by 60 ml is equals to 63 the number of times you can use a gallon of soy sauce to produce product A. 160 pesos divided by 63 is equals to 2.54, which is the cost of material, which is the soy sauce, in producing product A if we will be using a gallon of it as packaging instead of the usual 340 ml. The same procedure will be done for all the ingredients or materials of the product. If you will notice, the amount per piece would be cheaper if we will use a larger amount of container. That is what we call the economies of scale. Economies of scale is eco refers to the cost advantage, advantage experienced by a firm when it increases its level of output. The advantage arises due to the inverse relationship between per unit fixed cost and the quantity produced. The greater the quantity of output produced, the lower the price per unit cost. As entrepreneur, we must learn how to achieve the economies of scale. Okay, this is an illustration of the economies of scale. Economies of scale can be achieved through the following. Number one, cheaper capital. It can be achieved by finding the best source of capital with the least interest expense. Number two, reduction in logistics. Transportation cost or delivery fee becomes a common thing during the pandemic. Businesses must, be, must plan the procurement schedule of their materials or else it will cost excessive amount of transportation expense. Supply Chain Management and Economic Order Quantity, or EOQ, are topics in operation and production management that answers this area. Number three, buy in bulk. Buying in bulk, like buying in bigger containers, like our example earlier, will create a lower per unit cost. Four, efficient production. If the firm have efficient production, meaning all factor inputs, whether it is man, materials, machine, money, or methods, are utilized to its optimum potentials, economies of scale can be achieved. 5. Reduction in promotional cost. Advertising expense could have a large chunk of the expenses of the firm it used to promote the product. The firm must properly plan and execute the use of it so that they could re reap the benefits of it. And last one, spread risk. Business involves different risk, but we can spread it by calculating and managing it, expanding the business, or creating a portfolio of investment. That is why most businesses have different set of products rather than offering a single one so the risk can be spread. Okay. So this is an example of the costing of materials. Ang guwapo ko, Pansiteria, is uh, making um, pansit and uh, other noodle products. So noodles, 8 pesos. Meat, 20 pesos. Other toppings, 6 pesos and 50 cents. Veggie, 6 pesos. Broth, 2.25. Soy sauce, there is, that is what the one we solved earlier. So 2.54. 
Seasoning, 1.5. Packaging, 4.75. Cooking oil, 1.5. And transportation in, 2.0. So total cost, 55.04. The next thing is we have to come up with the income statement. The last table that the company have to prepare is the income statement. If you'll notice, the upper portion of the income statement is composed of the gross sales, which is the total amount of sales for a specified period of time. In this case, let us assume that Ang Guapoco Pancitria have sold the amount in their sales forecast. The cost of goods sold, which is the total amount of expenses directly incurred by the firm in the production of the product, these expenses are a variable, meaning that their total expenses are directly related to the number of units sold. The higher the number of units sold, the higher the variable cost is. The cost of goods sold can be solved by simply multiplying the total number of units sold by the, total, by the total cost while the gross profit is the difference between the gross sales and the cost of goods sold. The bottom part of the income statement are the list of expenses that are not related to the, mem to the number of units sold. These are fixed costs or expenses wherein even if the firm would not sold a single unit of their product, the firm will still incur expenses. A question was asked by a student from ABM last week to Ma'am Maria Aurea. If transportation in was part of the cost of goods sold. Okay. According to accountingcoach.com, transportation in cost, which are also known as freight in cost, are part of the cost of goods purchased. The reason is that accountants define cost as all costs necessary to get an asset in place and ready for use. Ang Guapo Ko Pansiteria Income Statement can be illustrated as follows. Gross sales, 24,000, less cost of goods sold, which is computed by multiplying 240 by 55.04. 55 so we get 13,209.6. To get the gross profit, we simply subtract 24,000, so, sorry, we have to subtract 13,209.6 to 24,000. Then we have the list of expenses. Salaries and wages, 4,200. Rent expense, 1,250. Marketing expense, 500. Utilities expense, 750. Supplies expense, 685. So the total, ex total expenses for week one is 6,985. So to, uh, our gro calculated gross profit is 10,790.4, which is the difference between the gross sales and the cost of goods sold. While the net profit of 3,805.40 is simply the difference between the gross profit and the total expenses. Okay, these are the three tables to be present in Chapter 4 of the business plan of non-ABM students. For ABM students, of course, you are expected to do the full version of the financial aspect. Okay, now, sharpen your mind and comment your answers in our page. We will be posting several account transactions and you will identify if it is an income account it will belong. It will take a few minutes to finish. Are you ready, guys? Here now are the titles. Each title will be read by me and then a five-second timer is needed. After five seconds, the teacher will read the comments and answers of the students for about 10 minutes before flashing the answer. The following are flashed. Okay. Payment of monthly rental. What type of income statement does it belong? Any answer? Okay, Haley Manosa have a correct uh, computation of net profit. Okay, payment of monthly rental. In what 
income account would that belong? Payment of monthly rental. Luis Dominic Rizostomo answer rent expense. Joan Centeno Mapa rent expense. Trisha May Roque rent expense. The answer is rent expense. Okay, the next one is payment of electric bill. Payment of electric bill. Mavel Canoy Marmol, Rob Arante, Janine Manuel De Guia also answers correct in the first question. Okay, we are now asking what is, where does payment of electric bill belongs? Okay, payment of electric bill. Okay, Aryan Imperial answers utilities expense. Mabel May Canoy Marmol also answers utilities expense. Haley Menosa utilities expense. Christian Ivan Alcantara utilities expense. You are all right. Payment of electric bill is under utilities expense. Next. Sales of the product. Where does the sales of the product belongs into? What account in the income statement that the sales of the product belongs into? Okay, we are still waiting for the answer of your answers. Please comment on our comment box so that I could recognize you. Sales of the product. Okay. The sales of the product belongs to gross sales or net sales. Annika Grace Villaverde, Lian Dagook, answer sales. So you are also correct. Iron Cabrera also answers sales. Next, sponsorships. Where can we identify or uh, uh, where can we uh, identify sponsorships? In what account? We're still waiting for the answer of, of, of the students within the few minutes because there is a time interval between the actual and the... Uh, Broadcast time. Sponsorship. Okay, Erwin Laksamanalad answers. Gross sales. Siguro ito yung sa kanina pa. Rube Arante. Okay. Sponsorships. Saan natin ma-identify ang sponsorship o maka-classify ang sponsorships? I think na ay na basa ko to kanina. Okay. Sponsorships say can be classified into interest expense according to Charlene Vargas. Erwin Laksamanalo also answer interest expense. John Edward Luna Mancilia says advertising expense. Trisha May Roque, advertising expense. Joan Centeno Mapa, interest expense. The answer is marketing expense. So an advertising expense is a type of marketing expense. So advertising expense could be, uh, could be uh, considered as a correct answer. Next, wage of cook. Wage of cook. How can we classify wage of cook? Where does the wage of cook belongs? Mary Grace Cruz, Shanley Centeno, Hazel Raagas uh, have commented for the last question, but we are now waiting for your answer. Wage of cook. Where does the wage of cook belongs? Okay, Hazel Agas answers 
Salaries and expense. Salaries expense, sorry. Annika Grace of Villaverde, answer profit. Jonas Pauline Joy Itulid, answer salaries and wages expense. Mabel May Canoy Marmol, salaries expense. The answer is salaries and wages expense. Salaries and wages expense. Next. How can we classify cleaning and sanitizing materials? Cleaning and sanitizing materials. Where, where does the cleaning and sanitizing materials belongs to? Thank you, Catherine Bautista, Arlene Imperial, for answering. Ray Anthony Saragossa is also watching. Okay. Cleaning and sanitizing materials, where does it belong to? Okay. Annika Grace Villaverde answers supplies expense. Tricia May Roque also answers supply expense. Daniela S. Bautista, supply expense. Alan C. Leoncio, supply expense. Of course, it is under supplies expense. Next, monthly load for cell phone. Monthly load for cell phone. How can we classify monthly load for cell phone into an income account? Thank you for answering. Jovelin Dabilay, Alia Casey, Andrea Cruz, Alex Marie Fernando. Okay, monthly load for cell phone. Monthly load for cell phone. Okay, of course, it could be classified as a utilities expense because monthly load is a telecommunication expense. So it is classified as a utilities expense. Next, ingredients. Ingredients. Where does it belong? To the income accounts in the income statement. Angeline Paragas Lopez, pre 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 prepaid expense kanina. The correct answer is utilities expense for monthly load for cell phone. We are now looking for your answer for ingredients. Okay, ingredients, the answer is, of course, the cost of goods sold. Diba? Earlier, I explained that all the ingredients, we must compute for the cost of materials. And the cost of materials, when we total the cost of all the materials, we would get the cost of materials for that particular product and can be used under to compute for the cost of goods sold. Delivery fee for shipment of supplies. Delivery fee for shipment of supplies. Okay, Sofia Sobremonte, cost of goods sales. Cost of goods sold, Charlene Vargas, you answered correct. Erwin Laksa Manalad, cost of goods sold. Okay, delivery fee for shipment supplies, cost of goods sold. So you are all correct. Okay, that activity really makes you active. Now you are ready. It is now quiz time. I will show a question and you are required to answer it on a piece of paper. You will then send a picture to your respective subject teachers as part of your written work. Okay. A table is given. You have to compute for the daily, weekly, and monthly income statement. Net sales, blank. Less cost of goods sold, blank. Gross profit, blank. Then expenses. Rent expense for daily, there is 145.84. Salaries and wages, 800 pesos. Utilities expense, 183.33. Supplies expense, 25. Advertising expense, 100. Stall design, 32. Depreciation expense, 60. So, total expenses blank, net profit blank. 
The firm sold 60 units per day at 80 pesos each. The total cost is 35 pesos. The firm operates six times a week, four weeks a month. Again, the firm sold 60 units per day at 80 pesos each. Total cost is 35. The firm operates six times a week, four weeks a month. So again, you have to answer it on a piece of paper. You will then send the picture to your respective teachers as part of your written works. Okay. That wraps up this week's episode of Usapang Business. I am sure that you've learned a lot today and I'm hoping to be with you next semester for more episodes of Usapang Business. Before we end, let me read some notes. MGHS Closet, brand new brand and branded sando, t-shirt and shorts. If you are looking for branded t-shirts and shorts, visit MGHS Closet page. 100% brand new, 100% cotton. Very affordable price for only 200 pesos. Shout out, Mom Hilda of Magahis Closet. Thank you. Laksada Japan Surplus by Mom Perla B. Laksa. Mobile number 0923 4515 Address 283 Cross Star Street, Bungahan, Malola City. Sa Laksada, Japan Surplus, gamit ay parang bago. Trusted since 2015. Okay? I would also like to uh, <laughs> invite you to come to Grace in a Cup, Panasahan Malolos Branch. We are located between the main gate of uh, William Filtry and Tawiran Road in Panalas Panasahan Malolos. Okay, that's it. <laughs> okay. I will end the today's episode by call, quoting Walt Disney. All our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. Once again, I am Billy E. Panganiban, your business partner in Usapang Business, signing off. Bye. Makinig, manood na sa teleradyo. Makinig, manood na sa teleradyo. Tele